Here's, here's a good one. Here's one that I think is important for us. We're, we're talking about traffic. We talk about how it keeps getting worse. Mm-hmm. That f- We've really pushed over the last couple of years, uh, 1450 South or George Washington Boulevard. Mm-hmm. That needs to go over the Virgin River and connect to I-15. Mm-hmm. Because that road, it's called George Washington because it goes through St. George and then it goes all the way through Washington to SR7. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the growth in Washington is on that as well. Yeah. And so we need that connector so people aren't coming over to River Road and then going up yep, and just causing that glut. If you ever tried to do that at five o'clock. Oh yeah, it's a mess. It's probably it's one of our mess. worst ones. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I got Greg MacArthur here. He's running for City of St. George City Council this uh, election cycle. November 7th is the election. August 15th. Is it August 15th for the primaries? It is. Okay, you might have to chop this up, but uh, we just sat down, had a great conversation. We talked land use, SITLA, specifically as, as he's a representative of SITLA. We talked not at all about water, so that's good, but we talked a little transportation. It's a good episode. Hope you guys enjoy it. Get in the comments. Don't forget to get out and vote. Register to vote. We'll see you out there. What do you see for the future over the next five years as, when, when it comes to that growth? Sure. Well, growth is, um, you, you brought up, we were just talking a little bit. You were, we brought up uh, in 2019 when I first run, there was a question that kept going around. What's the biggest issue of St. George? Yeah. And I think that the answer to that at the time was our growth. Yeah. And if we look at that now, four years later, what would be the biggest issue of St. George? It's probably still related to growth. Yeah. I mean, look what's happened over the last four years. Look at- It's crazy. Look at pandemic. Look what it did to our town. I've told the story before. In 2015, my wife and I moved here. We spent Christmas Day in Zion National Park. We drove all the way up to the uh, where the mouth of the Narrows is, and there was no one there. Yeah. We ran into like two car, two other cars, no trams. Nobody was there walking around. Three years later, just three years later, 2018, they had trams. It was packed on Christmas Day. It's crazy how fast it went. Yeah, isn't it crazy? I mean, it really is. In the last decade, we've gone from, you know, a town that's growing, absolutely, but we've become discovered. And now yeah. we're an entity, a solid entity that's everybody knows about, and it's going to keep going that way. Yeah, we have the LPGA Tour. We have Iron Man. We have these massive tourist um, spectacles that was kind of a vision. That was Vision Dixie, though, right? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. going back to Vision Dixie? Dixie? Yeah. We were, Saint, that was always a big part of it. St. George is a recreation destination. We know we're that. Yeah. And look, it's... We it's, leaned into it. It's been working. Yeah. It's working. The first time of the, the national championships of Ironman outside of Kona, the only place they've yeah. gone, St. George, Utah. That's crazy. It's incredible. And we won out over Asheville, South yep. Carolina, which is a beautiful town. Like... You know, they were they were considering a lot of places all over the world yeah. and they landed here in St. George, which I think is amazing. That says a lot about the town. And they loved it. But and, and they want gro- to keep coming back. But growth is an issue, right? We yeah. still have that population that the Vision Dixie goes back to some roots, but even back then it was divided. Do we grow or we do we not? Mm-hmm. Uh Jeremy Larkin told me about a time uh that when they were debating about town square, about how that was like a huge deal <laughs> that we didn't need a town square. And now you look at Town Square and you're like, oh my gosh, this is one of the coolest parts of St. George. Yeah. I think it's awesome. And not knowing any of that history before Larkin had told me that, I, I'm i like, of course, why would you not want this awesome park, right? <laughs> yeah. But that's it's that we're always facing that same pressure, you know, when it comes to what is growth. What what are your thoughts on that, man? Do you, do you going, going back to my first question though, in five years, like, where do you see St. George now? Sure. Well, here's what, here's what I think. Um, one thing I'm going to go to the, one of the questions you're going to ask me and you're, you're asking, what do you think about how do we deal with urban sprawl yeah. in St. George? What do we do? You know, how should we plan? Well, if you were to bring up a map of the city of St. George, mm-hmm. we'd, we'd probably want to reframe that. The, the question of urban sprawl or not urban sprawl, it's probably behind us now. And that's because if you look at the boundaries we're of the city full. of St. George, we're out of land. We're out. And so we're getting closer so and closer to that. build out. Yeah, And so the question, I'd like to reframe it to, Read it. how do you want City of St. George to look in 20 to 50 years? Because yeah. it's not about how we're going to sprawl now, because we have. We, we There has been sprawl that's happened, but we filled up our, our, our buildable land areas. Now we're surrounded by federal lands. Jeff, Jeff, what might be worth going into is it would be the county. Is this the county one or this is just Google? If you went into the county one, it could, you could see the map. But if you overlaid this this picture right here with what's privately owned... And then you start zooming in, 
There's not much left. There's houses everywhere. Yeah, there's a good one. If you go to SG City Maps, oh, if yeah, you search yeah. that and go there, then it's going to show you a boundary of the city of St. George. And there's still lands that SGCityMaps.com. Are... Mm-hmm. So right there. There you go. And if you pull up a, you pull up the maps layers, so there, there you're going to see your boundary there. Oh, uh, or go to maps. Yeah. I'm sorry, maps. There you go. And you go to imagery right there. So you're going to see your yellow outline. We should do a community class on how to use this. <laughs> Because I think I think um, another sidebar is going back to the budget meeting yesterday. I realized everything's you can go back and if you want to go line by line through the budget, you can go line by line through the budget. Yeah, and you can you can see the questions that the city council asks. Mm-hmm. Everything's documented. Everything's public record. You can do that if you want, but most people are not willing to do it. They just want to say we don't trust you because I don't like what's happening, right? It's yeah, like, yeah. wait, why don't you trust us? Mm-hmm. You elected me to do this. This is what you're, you're wanting me to do. I'm just a regular guy. You elected me and I go do this on your behalf. And then I tell you, hey, I think this is good or this is not good, right? That's why you elect me. Yeah. But it's, it's funny that some people show up to those budget meetings to just start questioning the line by line items. It's like, well, I, I, that's a great question. We already answered that. I could do it right now, but at the same time, we'll, we'll be, we could be here until, you know, for, for 24 hours, just talking through it, right? Yeah. Well, one of the, you know, uh, the mayor pro temp last night was making the point of the elected officials, all of us, we're, we're taxpayers as well. You know, there yeah. was, there's, sometimes there's differentiate people try to make that say, well, you're an elected official. So I don't know, you have a, you're different, you're in a different class, but right. exact same resident have the exact same issues as you do. Do I want the budget to go over? Do I want the city of St. Uh, the city of St. George to be, um, spending things on things that are just nice and not required? No. I yeah. don't, you know, I'm, I'm affected in the same way. So it's true. Um, yeah. It was interesting last night in the budget hearing, uh, there was a lot of questions being asked, you know, just specific questions on the budget. And it was, as it was brought up there, we asked those exact same questions, just like you do when we first learned about yeah. it, because I don't want you to be why are, frivolously on those things. Why are we replacing all of the guns? Yeah. Right. It's like, yep. that's a great question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why are we replacing all the guns? But, but to, to the point, the broader point, and to go back to the map real quick, Jeff, because I do, I do want to go back into this redevelopment. Cause I think you make a great point. Um, we're all, I was told once and it's stuck in my mind. I don't know if it's an actual fact, but 11% of the land in our county is actually privately owned and available for development. Mm-hmm. Is that correct. pretty close? That is. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I, I haven't been making that up. Um, so 11% of our entire county, otherwise it's owned by state and federal entities, right? So state parks, um, you know, uh, Sitla, Sitla owns a bunch, right? Mm-hmm. One sixth of our county is owned by Sitla. Yep. That's just by organization going back a hundred and plus years. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so looking at these maps, you know, desert color is kind of like the land, the, the last, the last phase of land that really is big development. That's not a bunch of canyons. Yep. Cause we're kind of an onion, right? And it's so, on Sitla land too. So that's all on Sitla. And it's right on, yes, yeah, Sitla land. So, you know, how do we want it to look? How do we get to 350,000? Right. Cause I think that's what everybody keeps talking about. We look at this 20 to 50 year plan and you know, if, if, if water, goes the direction we can serve water, right? We, we take the Las Vegas model to heart and say, we're in the desert. We're still, we might as well be death Valley as much as we have mountains just right there. Mm -hmm. We're still in this little bowl. We don't get a ton of water. We got to conserve that. But once we're full, we're full. Yep. Then 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 what do we do? Right. Then it's redevelopment, urban uh infill, those type of things. That's how you keep growing at that point. And some people call that gentrification. Mm Mm-hmm. That's right? exactly right. And so how do we how do we avoid that? Like what what what's what's your thought on how do we avoid that? Well, there's a difference between gentrification and urban infill. I think gentrification is Fair like enough. when you're when your zoning stays the exact same and then just people are redoing the houses and you know they're really expensive so you got to the, the land gets expensive and there's not a lot of opportunity for growth and so what you do you gentrification is changing that home into a multi-million dollar home on that same piece of property. Okay, right? got it. Yep. Whereas that urban, makes sense. urban infill is taking is basically upzoning and, mm. and getting more density in areas. We talked to um, Stacy Young. So I talked to him for about two hours. I could have talked to him for like four. I think 12 <laughs> people- doing a lot of things in this community. 12 people would watch the whole thing, I think, in the entire <laughs> county. Because we really, we got in depth on a couple of different things. But um, understanding like the zoning, I think it's important that if you're a citizen and growth is something that's important to you or you feel like it's, a, it's an issue, you got to get- um, you have to dive into zoning and understand why developers do what they do mm-hmm. with the rules that they have, right? Exactly right. Because the system is actually kind of upside down. The developers, 
there's not just like this simple set of rules and you just can build whatever you want, right? You, you, if it's in the zoning and in the regulations, which like in Ivan's, for example, basically everything that's a vacant piece of property is zoned, is zoned R110. You could build a, a 20,000 square foot lot, right? 0.2 acre is the smallest you could go and put a house on it, or you can go bigger from that, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every piece of vacant land in, in Ivan's. So gentrification can only happen if your rules are you can only build a house, Yep. right? So it's not set up to where it's a free market, truthfully, on the development side. And that's where the gatekeepers end up being the city council a lot of times, right? Mm-hmm. And And that's why I think it's important that when voting for those city council members, Understanding the developer's perspective and why land turns into a house versus a building, uh, man, you got to get educated on that or it's tough to have a, a good conversation, right? Would yeah, you agree? Abs- absolutely right. I would agree. You know, um, you know, a lot of the vacant land in St. George is zoned R110. The reason being is because that's our holding zone. Yeah. So it's just a, just it's a the open gate. land. It's the, it's the holding zone. Yep. And then if you want to do something else, you got to pull it out of that R110. Yeah. Um, we could talk, if we want to talk zoning a little bit, we just barely got done doing our downtown uh, general plan update. Yep. So, and I think that's very important. The reason being is because I think it is important to pull opinions out of it. Yeah. Meaning let's get a good master plan for what we want St. George to look like in 20 to 50 years. Mm-hmm. Let's put our general plan and let's put our zoning there. Mm-hmm. And so there's straight zoning for that. So it makes it so you don't have to come back to a city council that has all sorts of opinions because we do. And then right. make, so as a developer, I can know exactly what I can get in these zones and I can go for it. I can make plans for it. I can do with it, go that way. Yeah. And I think that's our plan for downtown St. George. Mm-hmm. We're in the process of that right now. I think we got to a really good place with our general plan Yeah. Um, to where, you know, downtown St. George is kind of a, I, I think we can all agree. It's a pretty cool place. Yeah. You know, it's kind of, kind of like we caught lightning in a bottle in yeah. St. George. It's got a really cool structure and plan, but we don't want it to, we want people to be able to enhance it and grow it and keep that there. Keep yeah. the things that are great but let's not let it go stale and just yeah. go into straight gentrification. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we were looking for with that general plan. I think we got, I think we got there. We got places where we can get a little bit more dense mm-hmm. um, and have, have reasons why you'd want to go to that area. And then places where you'd kind of preserve things and kind of, sure, let it gentrify and let it get better, mm-hmm. but kind of preserve the things you have. And I think that was, we, we hired a national level planner that looks at communities throughout the United States to help us get there. And I think yeah. we got there. Nice. So that's so, kind of the plan there. So if I pull up the zone, so we're on the SG city maps, zoom into the downtown. How do I see the map? How, if I'm, if I'm a developer. So we're still, this is, this is relatively new, meaning the, the general plan just got passed, but I don't know. I was trying to pull it up just the other day on this map to show the general plan. So you can go up to the, the layers and on the layers, you can see general plan. Um, Go to, go to maps, actually. Go to the maps. It's going to have the general plan right there. However, this is our old general plan, not our new it general plan. looks like plan. they've scrubbed it. Yep. So they're they're in the process of making updates okay, right got now. it. So then uh, if you go, Jeff, if you go back to the uh, St. George City page itself up on the tab, all the way to the, ta- all the, way to the city page left, um, and you go into the home page, I think they have a, I think they have a download. Area plan right there, uh, third third graphic in one two three, and then page five. There we go. Okay, so this goes out to twenty forty downtown lifestyle responsibility growth. When I talked to uh, I talked to somebody because I was I, I was asking about this. I called just um, just the department. What's the the planning zoning, really planning and zoning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Planning and zoning. And so she, she was talking me through it and then we were updating it and I kind of, I couldn't help but laughing because we just made uh euphemisms for all the codes that we used to have. Cause if you did, <laughs> if you put like the codes in one column and you put what we, what we say each one of these things is in another column, we just simplified it, but it's, you know, we're just, we're trading what we used to do it this way where we had a code. It was, you know, R110 or A20, whatever it might be. And now we got traditional neighborhood, connected neighborhood, connected corridor, and lively. We are, the euphemism for nightlife is lively. Everybody <laughs> in St. George. So, um, if I'm a, if I'm a developer today, could I use this map and and go, come to a city council meeting and say, hey, based off this map, this is kind of what I'm thinking for this property. Yes, there's one more thing we got to do 
Uh, What's so that? we got the general plan. There's so this this has just some general nature to it. Like here's here's how dense you can go, here's how high you can go, a few things like that. They've got to now put the codes in it as well. So like um, if you do a five story building, it, do, does there need to be certain type of setbacks? Does there is there do you need to go two stories up this way, then step it back, open another few stories? Like just different things that need to be figured out. Pork belly, yeah, pork belly stuff. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that that needs to get figured out before okay. they know exactly. And that the plan is to have that figured out by the end of the year. Okay. So we're working on it right now. Sweet. But that that is the plan. That makes it so. Again, you, you know, you're in a lively area. Okay, I know I know exactly what I can do. I know exactly what I need to do to build. There's no discussion on it any longer. So so on wor- who's working on it? Like when we when we say like uh, we're working on it, uh, I don't I don't necessarily think the city council is sitting down saying. You know, this is the this is the the number of stories we can have here. This is the paint colors we can have here. This is the you know type of design we want over here. Mm-hmm. They're not doing that, right? Well, they they bring it to us. So, planning and development staff, along with the city manager. So, John John Willis, so the city manager John Willis, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And his his team, mm-hmm. correct? Okay, they go through it. They go through it along with uh, consultants. So okay. the consultant group that's helped us get to this point. Oh, cool. Okay. And then they they're working on those things, and then okay. they bring it to city council. Hey, what do you think? Here's what we recommend. Okay. And then the city council has input based on what you know our electorate, what we think that people would like, and, uh-huh. and that's where that we put what we put. Yeah. So um, that again, that's the process going through right now. Would yeah? Are you going to release that before you guys approve it? Are you going to let people no, see it? No, it's a public process. It is a fully public it's process, a public right? Public process, meaning, yeah, the, the, there's um, there's work meetings where uh-huh. people come give input, and then uh, then it has to be passed, right? Yeah. So then it's a public input goes through planning commission, goes through city council, Perfect. everybody can cool. put in input. Sweet. The, the I know it sounded like a a question that seems obvious, but I think there's people that are just like, wait, how does this all go? The process system, right? Robert's rules, like coming to a meeting, understanding public. What's a public meeting? What's a closed meeting? Why do we have those? Why, um, you know, uh, Mayor Randall, she, she stopped the general public comment on the first meeting of the month, which was unanimously agreed upon by the city council. That is incorrect. Okay. Incorrect let's set, let's, let's set, let's set the, straight, the record straight. Because I am actually, I'm right up front. I think she made the right call to say, Hey, we don't just need general peanut gallery commentary once a month, just because mm-hmm. that does, it's not helpful. So I, I'm in her camp that like the, the spirit of the way mayor Pike instituted that general public, you know, there's certain times when we're getting to work. And then there's other times where we're like, Hey, we have some runway to go here. Well, we just went through COVID. We're literally scrambling with the biggest population growth that the county's seen ever. And maybe now's not the time to, you know, squabbling over whether, you know, these, these small issues are going to derail all these meetings from getting work done. Right. It's, mm-hmm. it's due process. So that's my, my opinion on it, which is fair enough. Valid. I, valid. Know, and somebody might disagree with me, but what, what do you think? You know, I, I completely agree. Um, meaning, uh, I, it, so public comment, what it, what its intention is, is intention is to, if you have an issue in your community, a yeah. pothole in your street, something that's wrong in the area. You come, saw, you, come you, let you, us know, you, and we can get to know and fix it. Exactly. And so that's, I think that was the intent of it. But what has been happening is just with the nature of politics, as of now, mm-hmm. uh, we've had national level issues entered into the city of St. George, and mm-hmm. it becomes a place where people can come and share their, share their opinions on those issues. But sometimes it gets a little bit maybe out of scope of what we need to be focusing on the St. George City Council. I can't help but think they're trying to get viral on some social media thing because they saw this one person do it and, you know, they they had this 500,000 people liked their video because they went up and said this thing to a board, right? Mm-hmm. It was like a trendy thing right it, now. It it's can be ridiculous. Used that way. And I can't help but think that there is some ulterior motive and we open the door for these things to happen that they're not productive, right? Yeah. I, you know, f- my opinion is, and when the, when the mayor approached me about it and said, what do you think? I said, well, I, I don't like to hinder free speech. You know, right. as, a, as an elected official, I want to make sure that I hear everybody's opinions because that's that's what I want. I'm here to represent. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what what we're trying to find is strike the balance between, you know, we don't want to just have it be something that's maybe is outside of maybe scope of what we're trying to get done at that city council that night, but yet let people still have the opportunity to speak and, and have free speech. Mm-hmm. So that was, it's a difficult situation. In my opinion, yeah. in, in my opinion, if I were to be vote on it, I'd probably lean towards let the people speak, you know, yeah. uh, open public discussion. But there are concerns with that too. Say if I have a big issue from a development perspective coming through the city council, mm-hmm. I'm number three on the list that night. City council starts at five. 
I have no idea when I'm going to get there. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm seven, eight o'clock because of public comment before that. So there's, right. I think we need to figure out how to manage it for sure. Yeah. And that's what I think we're trying to figure out. Yeah. I mean, it's a tough, it's a tough job, man. It's a <laughs> jo- tough job. It, I couldn't help but feel bad. I can't help but feel bad. And I almost like... You know, I came to the meeting where she announced it and they all, a bunch of people stood up and they were reading the constitution. And in my head, I'm fighting this logic chain that doesn't make sense to me. You know, you're not, you weren't necessarily restricting free speech because when you almost immediately opened for public comment on the budget, no one in the room had anything constructive to say. So it's like, you want to say something, but you also... Um, are taking issue with something that's not on the agenda for the day. You just want to be heard and put on the official record. And I don't understand that. What does what what power does that hold? Does that hold some extra power because it's on the record? Nobody looks at the record. Well, you know, um, people do want to be heard. They do, and I want to make sure that people are heard. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that needs to be made mention of is, you know, my my personal cell phone number is on the city website. That's how I got a hold of you. Yeah, I think you, right. That's if you exactly want to talk to me, you. you've got it. And, the, the, and, and, and all I'll, my interviews too. It's been tough. I'm gonna I'm gonna beat up Crest Staley a little bit because Mayor Staley's been dodging me. He's the last mayor <laughs> out of the five cities. I haven't gotten him on the calendar. <laughs> I probably scared him with a two hour podcast, right? Um, but at the same time. I get he's a busy, he's a busy guy and and I, and I I appreciate that he has a a singular focus in the city of Washington and and sometimes doing this is a little bit of a distraction right so I, I appreciate that however it's pretty easy to get a hold of everybody yeah if you want to be heard everybody you can go and find them they shop at the grocery store and and we love this community yeah and we want it to go the right way and that's our that's what we're that's why we're in this yeah. we're doing all the political things which isn't as easy as it used to be you yeah, know exactly and it's because we want to talk to you we want to hear the issues and we want to make sure that the community is a, you know the best it can be so um okay well, let's transition out of that because <laughs> i uh, yeah I, we we got off track we're jeff sidetracked. jeff you're supposed to bring me back on track man <laughs> i'm getting all fired up Sorry, um, I, I, uh, the, the, yeah, Pe- <laughs> technical difficulty Pe- peanut gallery. <laughs> it's the peanut gallery. It's the peanut gallery. Don't overuse the peanut gallery. I, but there's so much of the peanut gallery. There's I so just, much peanut gallery. I just couldn't, uh, I couldn't believe it. It's like social media in real life. Social media in real life. Yeah. We have a, a $519 million budget. Mm-hmm. We do. Um, did you, when you, cause you've been working with different organizations within the city for several years, right? I have. What, refresh just your kind of track record and, and what you do for, what do you do for work, actually? Let's start there. What sure. do you do for work? So my day job is I work for CITLA, so okay. which is a school and institutional right. trust lands administration. Right. So I manage all of their commercial lands. Okay. So um, I, I work in that capacity. I also do economic development for them. Okay. Um, also have a commercial real estate license. So on the side, I basically focus on hospitality properties. So buying and selling of hospitality properties. Nice. Okay. Um, so that's, that's kind of my current day job. Okay. History in the uh, city of St. George. Um, I moved back to St. George in 2010. I became the president of the St. George area chamber of commerce. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. That was in that interview too. Was that a fun job? Yeah, Seems was, like that'd be a cool job. It's a fun job for sure. Seems like I mean, if job. you want to be involved in the community and the business sector and and uh, just get to know everybody in St. George. It's it's a great job. A shout out to Sean, the the current St. George Chamber of Commerce uh, director, who is who is awesome. Sean We're in very awesome. good hands. What a great guy. He is a great guy. So uh, I'm a big Sean fan. I want to <laughs> I want to throw that in there too. We shout got out to Sean. Sean. Yeah, we, Sean fan club here. So um, seems like a fun job. So you did that. You work with local businesses. Essentially, is the job right? Mm-hmm. It's like you're networking with social businesses. You want to help them grow their businesses, yep. right? Yeah, you're at the, to help businesses in, in St. George, Washington County area grow and succeed. That's the job. Yeah. So you did that six years, and then what'd you do after that? Uh huh. So then that's when I moved into commercial real estate. Got it. Um, the economic development. So St. George area economic development. So just doing economic development for Washington County. That position came up in what was it 2000. Um, and, uh, I kind of got recruited into that position. Okay. So I took that over, uh, for a year. Um, so I was doing economic development for Washington County. Um, it was great. So position. that was the County, that was County mm-hmm. level economic yep, development. St. George area economic development. It's and basically w- all the cities, um, basically pulled, get together along with the County and hire and have this outside organization called St. George area economic development, make sure that everybody's represented and that jobs to 
basically bring businesses in to Washington County and uh-huh. also help businesses grow from within in okay. Washington County. Cool. And you did that for how long? So just a year. Okay. And then Sitla came and headhunted me out of that. Got so, it. And then I've been with Sitla ever since. Okay. And Sitla is fascinating. So I, I'm debating because of our time. <laughs> I, we can't do Sitla. I wanted to do Sitla, but I'm probably going to have uh, Kyle Paisley. I'm going to see if I can get yeah, Kyle Paisley. Great. I called him and then we, we haven't connected yet, but I'd like to have him on because he might be a, a, another option as well. He'd or, be a great person to have. Yeah, he's the director of devel- development for the state. So he's my boss. Okay, this is a personal This is a personal question. If you don't want to answer this question, I appreciate it. And I didn't prepare you for this. So <laughs> I, right. don't, don't feel like I, I'm attacking, but I am curious, how can... How can you sit in the city and work for Sitla and be a commercial developer, right? And and not run into conflicts. Sure. Is that tough? Has that been tough to do or not really? Not really. So okay. here's the reason why. Um, I'm managing economic development and um, commercial projects for Sitla, Okay. Not in the city of St. George. Okay. Got it. And that's for a reason. Got so it. I don't run into conflict of interest with the city of St. George. Okay. Um, commercial real estate, it's, it's a bonus more than a hindrance and, or, or a conflict. I am, I'm not building, promoting, or doing hotels within the city of St. George. Okay. Um, but I do have all the knowledge. Okay. So I know exactly, you know, um, I know about development, you know, I know about property valuations, mm-hmm. you know, it brings a lot of knowledge. So it actually helps. I'm not entering into decisions or thought processes blind. Yeah. I have this information. You have experience mm-hmm. you have, and then you have tools at, at your disposable to kind of get better answers that maybe, uh, Dentists might not be able to. Yeah. Is that what it makes, well, I mean, the majority of the decisions you make as a city council member, what is it? The majority of it's uh, zoning. Yeah. I right? think I got a breakdown. It's like parks. Yeah. We so, got budget, development, and water, <laughs> energy. Yeah. Zoning, planning, and with uh, knowing development, knowing commercial real estate, yeah. knowing how city economic development works. Yeah. It all helps with making these decisions. So right. when someone's looking for a representative on the city council, I think when you're trying to say, well, who can represent me? I think someone that has those knowledge and those, that background I think understands so it. So you're not going in just kind of with, hey, here's how I feel. It's, well, right. based on this data, I can make good decisions. Well, so two things. And one thing I was given feedback that I, I should probably push deeper sometimes. Um, even though it's not St. George City, Sitla property is going to impact our county in a massive way, right? Mm-hmm. And so even even properties outside of St. George, being that you sit on the the city council when when making decisions with Sitla over in this, you know, adjoining city, those are big economic impacts. So could could there not still be some view of even though it's not this imaginary line that we kind of drew in the in the world, like St. George is the economic hub, right? And just because Sitla is not necessarily the only property is desert color and it's allotted, you know, there's tons of property in, in Hurricane and Ivans and Santa Clara. You know, there's there's property all over the place that that does have some of that. You haven't run into any feelings where there was some con- conflict there? You know, being in the middle of, of knowing developments that are happening, say in Washington City or uh-huh. Ivan City or, or other things that, that are associated with Sitla land, there's never a conflict that's like, well, am I going to prioritize St. George, I mean, over over Ivan's or over Washington City? It doesn't work okay. that way. Yeah. Okay. So the conflict, though maybe perceived, uh-huh. is, is, is not existent. Yeah. And, and I, I, I don't necessarily think there's a whole lot of um, opportunity to where there's like, you know some appropriation of, of money at some level because of that role, it doesn't make any sense because it's completely, it's a state organization and they kind of have a mandate anyway, right? Yeah. Sitla can kind of do whatever, mm-hmm. truthfully, they could do whatever they want with their land. Is that right? Well, Sitla's mandate is it's, it's the school and institutional trust lands administration. Right. What it is, is we have these lands. These lands were given to Sitla, this organization. Yeah. We got, we got the map. It's like every sure. sixth, every mm-hmm. sixth square there. Yep. At statehood, there was four sections per township that was given to it's called Sitla now, but at the time it's just uh, uh, whatever the organization is called at the time, but basically an organization that has these lands, holds them in reserve, and then sells them or develops them mm-hmm. to go to basically the schools. Yeah. I mean, there's eight beneficiaries, but the main one, 99%, is general public schools. Right. And they, and they manage a fund. It's about $3 billion. And, and what they can give back to the schools uh, via programs is only off of the 
income earned. They can't spend any of that principal budget. So the the principal fund is ra- roughly three billion. They mm-hmm. can't spend that in the programs, but they can pay. They can spend the surplus that that money generated. That's correct. In an it's, annual, it's invested. Year. It's yep. invested mm-hmm. and at, at a certain churns money every year. Churns money, and that's that's managed by a whole other separate or, uh, uh, board, right? Because mm-hmm. there's a the Sitla board, but then yep. there's like I think it's, it's called, fit, Sitla it's called Sitfo. Sitfo, mm-hmm. that's right. Yep. So then the financial board manages the money. So there's there's a hey, hey Rob. I, yes, I, I want to. I want to ask a question, Greg. D- yes, please. Sure. I'm not going to name names, but we, <laughs> Rob, Rob, and I have, um, you know, just from people that we've talked to, some people have said that Sitla does not manage their money in the best way. What are your thoughts on that? Do you agree with that? Do you think there's anything that can be improved as far as managing the money? Um, I, could they know. be doing better work with the land? Because like, I'm looking at this land and thinking, how could they use this land? to better the county and the schools in the county versus necessarily like the state. Sure. Well, it, so SITLA's mandate, let's go back to SITLA's mandate yep. from statehood. What's our mandate? Our mandate is to get the most value uh-huh. out of lands. Highest and best use. Highest and best use, most value out of lands. Okay. Because it was, it was put set aside at statehood to generate revenues for our beneficiaries. Fair enough. Um, now, when SITLA goes into looking at the development of lands, um, we could take we take any example. Uh, uh, let's take Desert Color, say since it's related to the City of Saint George. Sitla doesn't just go in and say, "Hey, we're going to get the highest and best use out of this, and we're going to do whatever the heck we want." That's not how Sitla operates. Mm-hmm. Sitla goes to the local municipalities and they say, "Look, we have this land." Typic- Sitla typically um, partners with a developer because we're not developers; we're landholders. We're landholders, and then we work and find with work with developers to help us develop that land. Right. So Clyde Companies is the the develop, large development organization that is doing Desert Color. Mm-hmm. So they come, they make a proposal saying, we'd like to develop these lands. We think there's future there. And then what does Sitla do? Sitla goes to the local municipalities and county and says, we have this developer. They're looking at these lands. What do you think? Mm-hmm. And then we make sure that we get buy-off. Mm-hmm. So it's always in conjunction with the local communities and Got the it. counties. Um, and that's throughout the state. Um, Sitla not, does not have a history of going in and just doing whatever they want on the lands. So, so as far as desert color goes, just just to clarify the way that it works. So, so Sitla's making money for, like directly from Clyde, and I, I guess maybe just talk about the logistics. Just talking about desert color in particular, how, on how how the money goes from you know the developer to the landowners to you know people that are renting or whatever to yeah. How so do the they money make money off that Sitla land? Is then, it just the sale? Sure. Basically, it's the sale, but it's a little more complex than that. Okay. So in some cases, Sitla will just sell the land. In some cases, Sitla will get a development partner and go into a development agreement. So Sitla will hold the lands, and then the developer will develop, putting their money in, and then at the final sale, so like when a house is on the, when a house is completely done. Finished product. When the finished product is there, then Sitla gets a percentage of that finished product. And then they release the land at that time to the developer. So it just sits, that development happens. On Sitla lands okay. until it sells at the end. Do they do they carry any um, title encumbrances on that property at all? Just depends. Sitla will put title encumbrances on properties, um, just depending on what the agreement is. Uh huh. Sometimes not. Sometimes not. It's because mm-hmm. it's it's a it's a build your own adventure tour a little bit, right? Because you're like I could I could just sell it to them and be done, mm-hmm. and a developer can go do whatever they want with it. Mm-hmm. And now that fund, that fund is grown. The three billion goes to three billion point one, right, or whatever it goes. Mm-hmm. So, so may, maybe maybe it's a bit presumptuous then to say, "Hey, Sitla doesn't manage their money correctly because there's so many moving pieces depending on what the land use is for and like where it is and yeah. who the developer is and what they're building. And on what's it, the right? potential for it in the yeah. future, right? Like looking out here, like out Beaver, you know, you go out into the West Desert, right mm-hmm. into the hills. Like, screw, yeah, go all the way to the edge of the state. Like, you know, all those pieces of property, what, uh, that's grazing land or mining property, right? That's about as all, all that you could use for it, mm-hmm. right? And, and Sitla does in a lot of cases. There's different aspects of Sitla, right? Yeah. So I, I, I work in the development arm of Sitla. Okay. So, um, you know, when there's development projects that have housing or commercial or things like that, that's, that's the side that I work on. Mm-hmm. There's also a side they call surface. And they're basically managing all of the leases and... Uh, and, and minerals and all sorts of different things that happen on lands as well. Mm-hmm. And so like lands that are kind of, you know, out there in the West desert, you're yeah. right. It'd be grazing leases and things like that. Um, but let's, let's go back to Sitla managing their money. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, so I could see where maybe someone on the outside maybe says, well, maybe they don't manage their money as good as they could. I don't know. I just, but having been on the inside, knowing how Sitla works and, and again, Sitla is an open book too. If you want any information on mm-hmm. how we manage things, um, they do a very good job and there's checks and balances that go along all the entire way. Yeah. So, um, your, your, your argument is whoever said that is up in the night. Yeah. I, I I'd invite them to, um, Explain that. ask more questions and, and kind of get specifically on what they're talking about, you know? Yeah. And it can help give them answers. But I think Sitla is financially managed very well. Like projects are not, land sales or projects are not turned over to someone just because, oh, we made an offer and there you go. Yeah. It's it's scrutinized to- heavily. It has to go through different layers. There is a local staff like myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it goes through a real estate committee, which is made up of a real estate committee, perfect real estate commercial real estate professionals on a state level, like that have had massive background in development and yeah. real estate. I mean, the, to be on that board, you've had to have so much experience, top level. Yeah. Nation. Something like Stacy, where he's like, I've, he's been in development. He's a land use attorney. He's been mm-hmm. doing this for, you know, 40 years. Yep. If th- that would be, a, that would be a, a, an expert in the level. It's not a guy like me who, you know, got into residential real estate seven years ago. Like it's, I'm not going to go sit on that yeah, board. It's typically, it's my head. typically someone that's been like a CEO of a national level commercial or residential development yeah. that's seen it everywhere yeah. that sits there and helps make decisions. So that that's on the real estate committee. And then there's a board that has to approve it as well. So Got it's it. very thoroughly vetted and it's vetted based on net present value. So what if I let this go today? Or what if I do this development today? Yep. Well, should we sit on these lands and wait until another 10 years is going to be worth more? So you yeah. just start do these calculations are made. So I think they're managed financially very well. What do they use for the risk free risk free rate? That's a good question. The 10 year? <laughs> I can tell you it's, uh, you know, Sitla invests their monies, uh, at about seven, seven and a half percent. So there you go. There it is. Jeff, that's what we got to beat. Yeah. That's what we got to beat. So if we want to do a Sitla development, put that in your pro formas. I know we got to plug that in there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm plugging it in right now. <laughs> plug, plug, plug it in right now, man. So, I mean, cause we could go, um, and talk a little bit more about Sitla and their role with housing. I think there's a bigger role that Sitla could play in Washington County because we're full, man. We're full. And if the private land's full and I look at all these blue boxes and I think about, you know, what it is, man, you just look at that big blue square just north of St. George in Washington and the exits going there. You can't help but to scroll into that map right there off Green Springs in the seven in the. Hey, if you scroll into that right there, what do you took where there's a 36, 31, one and six, yep, all that. Yep. So you're right. We have a lot of lands there. That is, is it, not available. It's not available. Scroll, you know, scroll you know and why. keep going in deeper. No, I don't. Please tell that's me more. It's in the Red Desert Reserve. Okay. So that's the that's the desert tortoise habitat lands. And where does that... But some of that is not, right? And the majority of that is. Majority of it is. Mm-hmm. And um, so... And if that, if that tortoise reserve, if those lands weren't in that tortoise reserve, St. George in this whole area would not grow at all. So, so wouldn't it make sense for them to swap that land if they couldn't use it anyway? Oh, that's the plan. That okay. The Sitla would like to swap those lands. Absolutely. Pull those out of the desert reserve. And that's part of the long-term plan. There's a lot of lands in there. Yeah. There's a lot in there. Um, so then, but so you have to swap for federal lands. You can only swap for federal, federal. Well, I mean, if we're, we're dealing with lands that are owned by a state entity, uh-huh. Sitla, what are you going to swap with? Well, we're going to, we're not going to swap with a private landowner with lands outside of there. Cause they're not going to want lands that are sitting in a desert reserve. So you're going to have to swap with lands that could be used somewhere. That's probably the federal government, uh-huh. meaning BLM or something like that. And to do those type of things, literally, literally takes an act of Congress. So it's possible. And the plan is to do that, Mm -hmm. but it'll take time. And and, and it needs to go because the federal government would have to take, I mean, take that property away from the reserve, right? To do anything with it. No, no, it'd stay in the, it'd stay in the reserve. It just, you just can't develop it. Right. So that's, there's not, there's not interest in it because you can't develop it. Right. So you have to trade it with someone that just wants to, do preservation. Yeah, you're right. And then pri- a private owner's not going to want it because they can't correct. do anything with it. So, can't do anything that makes sense. So it. it takes an act of Congress, takes time. That's what you want to do. Who is there like a team that does that? Is there is there like a land swap team? You got a development team, you have the There are there is. There are people looking at it. It's just not easy. It's not easy. It's difficult. You you yeah. It sounds like right up Jeff's alley. You like <laughs> to do everything the hard way, right, Jeff? Jeff? Jeff, let's get you involved. Let's get you on the team. Yes. <laughs> Don't say yes all the time, bro. No, you're, yes. you're, you don't mean yes. You know you don't mean yes. I, I, that's an interesting parcel right over there by Sand Hollow. Which one are you talking about there? Uh, the light blue, just northwest. 
right there. That is currently under development. Under development. It is. That's that's a big area out there. Uh, that's going to be a huge boom, I, I think. Oh, absolutely. What what else? Um, because I know we're both kind of short on time. Oh, man, we could do this. That, I told you, I was like, we could do two hours. I know you don't got two hours, but it's we could fun do talking. it. Um, what what do you think? You know, how do we see five years in St. George? Are, is the population going to feel like it's it's choking out? Or are we going to be able to keep pace with the infrastructure? Are we on track for that? Do you feel like we're confidently on track to keep up on the infrastructure for the growth over the next five years? Yes, that's one thing that's really important to me. I mean, we're, yeah. we're an older town, right? We've been around for 100 years plus. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have to make sure that our, our infrastructure is aging. Uh-huh. And I think um, the city is doing a good job of keeping up with infrastructure that's aging. So that's, that's a big plus. If you're, we're going to talk about the budget, but you know, if you look at our budget, yeah, it's 500 million, you know, a lot of that, a large portion of that budget, I don't have my percentages with me is on infrastructure Yeah, on maintaining, um, building new roads, those type of things. So I think we're definitely aware of what we need to do and we'll keep up with it on the infrastructure. It's, it's a very important to me and I'll make sure that's always a priority is, you know, I sit on the city council. Um, yeah, there, there's the uh, capital fund project, enterprise oh, fund, general fund. Um, infrastructure is capital project, right? Capital projects, enterprise funds. And enterprise funds. Mm-hmm. So so basically 70% of the entire budget is going to be on supporting the future. That's correct. Mm-hmm. That's correct. Um, well, aside from water, because I can't do the water thing all the time, because that's what we always end up on. Aside from water, what's, what is an infrastructure project that is costly but required? Like we got to do it. Is it transportation? Is it, is it energy? Sure. Um, that's a good question. It's, it's keeping up with all of our, our roads and maintaining our infrastructure. Here's, here's a good one. Here's one that I think is important for us. We're, we're talking about traffic. We talk about how it keeps getting worse. Mm-hmm. That f- we've really pushed over the last couple of years, uh, 1450 South or George Washington Boulevard. Mm-hmm. That needs to go over the Virgin River and connect to I-15. Mm-hmm. Because that road, it's called George Washington because you're St. George and then it goes all the way through Washington to SR7. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the growth in Washington is on that as well. Yeah. And so we need that connector so people aren't coming over to River Road and then going up yep, and just causing that glut. If you ever tried to do that at five o'clock. Oh yeah. It's a mess. Probably it's one of our mess. worst ones. And, and the, I said this the other day, I was like, to St. George's benefit, there's only a couple of those places. Mm-hmm. There's, it's not everywhere. We do have traffic, but it, they're, they're consolidating in a few small spaces, but it's partly because of the land geographic area. We're having to have roads and twist them around mountains and all kinds yeah. of stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. We kind of run into these choke points. Uh, and so that's, uh, that's good to, good to know that transportation keeps coming up all the time and all the Facebook, you know, comment boards and stuff. It's like traffic is horrible. They made a, they really did a crappy job out there in the fields in Washington, you know, Washington fields and little Valley, right. Cause of the, the traffic, um, which is a topic that I talked to Stacy young about is that's not the original plan. We weren't supposed to just put a <laughs> bunch of houses out there. That's not what they wanted, but that's what the city council was. We got, that's what we got. So uh, you know, let's not make those same mistakes again, right? Yeah. But, and, I, and I'll answer two more on what I think is important for infrastructure. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll go back to the map. Go back to the St. George City map. And, and one's easy to answer. For for infrastructure, for mm-hmm. the growth of St. George, the most important thing we can do is invest in two things. Number one is Tech Ridge. I think Tech Ridge is extremely important for St. George and we got to do it right. Amen. Um, it's it's national level attention to our city. It brings in the higher paying jobs. Yeah. Um, our developer up there has had a hard time with it uh, just because dealing with city land. But yeah. you know what? Everything that he said he's going to do, or I'll say Tech Ridge Devel- Development or Isaac Barlow, everything that he said that he's going to do, every plan that he's had, he's come through with to date. Yeah. And the plan that he has is ambitious and it is awesome. And I think we're going to get there. I'm, I'm a huge pro Tech Ridge. That's yeah. like, if I'm a project, I talk to Isaac as often as I can. I want to, I've told him, and I told this you know, this, it, it's not like a secret. I told him, it's like, I want to help you do whatever I can help in this development. Cause as a real residential real estate agent, never worked on, you know, I wasn't like a new construction guy. I, uh, you know, I worked with Jeremy Larkin and just help people sell homes. That was all I did. And so now as I've, you know, stopped working just with Jeremy and building my own team with Jeff, you know, going back to it, I'm like, this is a cool development. How do I fit in? Like, just yeah. I'll raise my hand. How do I fit in? How do I help out? And I do love that project. I think it's really smart, but I also really like Black Desert because it fits in to the plan for Ivans and Santa Clara for where they wanted to be, right? And Black Desert's great too. Black Desert's for great. And, and it seems counterintuitive because it's a golf course, another <laughs> golf course. We have 14 in the county, right? In a in a water, um, a, a, a very drought prone area, right? Does golf, do golf courses make sense? 
probably not 14 of them. And I'm excited about the newest one, right? <laughs> like I can't help it, it. It doesn't make sense, but it is what it is. And I think Desert Color is awesome. So I like these big developments. I'm excited for, you know, as we grow to that 350,000, those big developments are going to be good impacts on all of all, checks, all the boxes, right? Money, uh, transportation, him putting all the, all the parking below ground, right? He's like, I don't, I want people walking up there. I don't want people, you know, trying to find a parking spot. I don't want big old parking lots up here. Right. So he's got a yeah. cool plan that I think will work. He does. And it is bringing us national level attention and it will get us the jobs we need. Yeah, for sure. I'll give you one more. Yeah. Um, if you scroll out to the St. George city airport. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is a good one. So this one's extremely important for our economic development as well. Um, if you look at that airport, if you look what's around it, you have raw land. So mm -hmm. you've got about Flat. 1,400 raw acres land. raw land sitting around the airport. This is one of the faster growing airports, municipal airports in the country um, with 1,400 acres of raw land around it owned by one owner, <laughs> Sitla. And so you don't- Way to go, Sitla. So, Nailed it. And so you don't see that one owner. So the planning of these lands for our economic development is extremely important. We yeah. got to make sure that we get the right businesses on here, the right plan. In fact, Sittler right now is doing a, a planning, uh, basically uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars planning effort to make sure that these get planned correctly and you'll see them move forward. So that's, that's important too. Um, St. George has a, does a really good job of pulling in residents. We do great because it's an awesome place to live. Yeah. We'd have to make sure that we put some concerted efforts in our economic development and bringing in the right companies to St. George to make sure that there's jobs here for us and our kids moving yeah. forward. I agree. I agree. I like that. That's a good one. What do you, hey, hey, Greg, I, were you talking um, the 1400 acres? Is it this purple section here? Well, that's just the zoning is what you have up right now. Oh, right. Um, right. But basically the, a lot of the raw land you see around it, like if you were to go to the Sitla map, you could see the Sitla acres of you in blue. But yeah, there's just a lot of raw land around it. A lot of it's Sitla, a lot of it, it there's, there's also other raw lands that's not owned by Sitla, but there's, there's left. a great. Left, right, right, right over there, there, right there. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and, you know, that's the, yeah, that's the thing. How many flights go out of there right now? I don't have the answer for you, but it's quite a few. I mean, we're going to, um, what we're going to Phoenix, Dallas, uh, Salt Lake, Salt Lake, Los Angeles, I think it's coming back online here shortly. I know that cause long, it was long beach, right? Mm -hmm. We were going to long beach. Yeah. And that was right before COVID. And then that stopped. Yeah. Yeah. And Just then I was down. wondering how, how quick it was going to bounce back. It's coming back. I mean, if you look at the airport statistics every year, we're higher and higher every year. It's Didn't just we growing. just get a tower? Because I guess they've been dispatching. We're, we're asking for federal funds for a tower. Okay, got um, it. Which got I it. think we've got approved for. So that's coming, which okay, is great. Yeah. I think yeah, somebody else told me about that too, I think on one of the conversations I had. So, I mean, that having an airport access is going to be huge um, for tourism, but also for a higher end clientele to get here easily and quickly that will bring dollars, right? They bring, and we have, we have a great a great system of taxing the people that come here for, you know, hospitality and vacation purposes. And that, that fund really helps the city and helps infrastructure projects. But, you know, talking to Chris Hart and, and Rick Rosenberg, it helped me realize too, when things go wrong and when we have disasters and stuff, that, that rainy day fund goes away really fast. Yeah. And, you know, floods and things like that, that happen, you know, you could just go from, balancing the budget to all of a sudden we're in, in the hole on, on a massive scale. Right? Yeah, when, you're, when you're relying on sales tax. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. You have to make sure that you have good industry in place as well. Yeah. We got to have that. And, and it's more than tax too. I think this is another part of this budget conversation that I, I want to keep diving into. Um, and maybe a different, a few different conversations, but inflation is still a tax, right? Like we, if we have to pay more for water because um, there's scarcity to it, right? If supply goes down and demand goes up, price goes up and that's inflation. That's a tax, right? Like ultimately that's a tax. So if we don't invest in the future and build dams to where we can hold the water to where we don't have a scarcity of water, then we can help control when we can control the supply, we can keep the prices down. So even though we've spent money on the front end, the goal is to try to not have this get out of hand on the back end. And now to live here, the water costs three times that of, you know, another area, right? You're right. We got to be responsible with our water development. Absolutely. Yeah. Water development. But then also we got to take that same thing to roads and all these other things is, you know, taxes isn't just parks. It sometimes feels that way, but at, at the same time, taxes preempt 
other fees that come up in the county, like food and energy and water that also frustrate people. You know, we got to, we, you know, that inflation just to have low tax rate, but it's really expensive to live here. It's still, it's a lose game for us. So we got to have all the pieces kind of going together. And I feel like we're, we're on a good track. I think we are. Yeah. You got to make sure that things are managed correctly. Yeah. Really. I mean, you do. It's, it's so important because you make, bring up a good point. If it's not, you get behind or you're doing it in a way that's going to cost us more because we're not doing it the most effective manner. Yeah. Then those are things that we got to look at for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, I know we both got stuff to do, but thanks for coming on, man. Good luck on the, on the run. I I know you're running. Um, you're running for city council. I am Greg MacArthur. He's on, on the ballot. Um, we're, recording this in in june but this will come out later on i hope you guys enjoyed it uh jump in the comments let's talk talk and and find out what we need from saint george thanks man thanks for the opportunity